This is a part of the superconducting magnet for the alpha magnetic spectrometer, which is a space-based uh, particle physics detector. It works as a mass spectrometer deflecting charged particles, which are then detected by an array of particle detectors. What you have here is a bank of coils which actually constrain the stray field from the magnet. The main uh, magnetic field would be going straight through where I'm uh, standing at the moment. The purpose of these coils is to keep the stray field inside. If they didn't, then the main magnetic field from this system would interact with the Earth's field to put a rather large torque on the International Space Station where this is based, uh, which will be unacceptable. So what you can see here is a racetrack shaped coil made from aluminium stabilized low temperature superconductor. This is niobium titanium. In the center is a coil former that this whole system is wound on. This is an aerospace standard heavily alloyed aluminium, very strong material, uh, maximum strength and minimum weight. Coils are not actually immersed in liquid helium but are cooled by conduction. A pipe carries helium around the top and around the bottom of each coil and simply intercepts at each of these heat shunts. The thermal conductivity of the coil is so high that just removing heat at these two places is sufficient to keep the coil within about 0.1 degrees of 1.8 Kelvin. We have designed and built a number of magnet systems using both high temperature and low temperature superconductors. Uh, essentially there's only one decision to make between the two and that's cost. Uh, at the moment, high temperature superconductor is a relatively immature technology and it's very, very expensive. A number of companies, including ourselves, have invested in the technology over the last few years in methods of using it for manufacturing systems in the hope and on the promise that the wire manufacturers would reduce the price. Now this unfortunately hasn't happened. And so at the moment, apart from a few niche applications such as large electrical machines, there really aren't any clear applications for high temperature superconductors and this is a great pity. The picture may change in the future because there is now a new conductor which was discovered in 2001, magnesium diboride, which has some of the properties of low TC conductors and some of the properties of high TC conductors. Because weight is at such a premium, it is worth doing more processing on the conductor to get a lighter one. An alternative material for stabilising superconductors is high purity aluminium. Now it's very, very expensive, but it's much lighter. Now one of the difficulties with an aluminium conductor is that it's very difficult to join together. You can try to weld it, but the welding process will tend to destroy the superconductor. Uh, so what we do is a soldering process. Unfortunately, you can't solder directly to high purity aluminium, so it has to be copper plated. And the copper plating is a very nasty and expensive process. But again, the fact that the weight is at such a premium means it's still worth doing. What we would like to see for applications is for the magnesium diboride wire to be operating at maybe 20 to 50 amps at a temperature of around 20 Kelvin. I have here a schematic picture of a multiple coil system for a superconducting magnet. This one is actually an adiabatic demagnetization refrigerator magnet for a space project. It's used to cool um, an X-ray bolometer to a temperature of around 30 millikelvin. This is how it looks in the hardware. You can see one, two, three, four coils on the outside and then there are coils on the inside as well. Now this whole mass, the majority of which is just support structure which holds the coils and resists the forces between them, at the moment has to be cooled by a cooler to four Kelvin. This cooler is a space qualified cooler. Now space qualified coolers are very expensive and also produce very little cooling power. There will be a great advantage to us if we can operate this magnet at a higher temperature we can use a cheaper, smaller cooler because it's easier to withdraw heat at higher temperatures than at low temperature. So one thing we would like to do would be to make this magnet from magnesium diboride to operate at maybe 20 Kelvin. Even 10 Kelvin would save us an enormous amount on the cooler. Developing technology and exploration and ex pushing the boundaries is part of what makes us human. And if people before us hadn't gone through this process, we really wouldn't be where we are today.